Welcome to the ShareWell tutorial on basic navigation. Today I'd like to talk just a little bit about the dashboards and I'm going to break this series up into uh, two parts on navigation. One on the dashboards and the other piece on the actual creation of a ticket. So today we're going to focus on the main page that logs in or that comes up when you first log into the tool. Uh, one of the things that we will really want to focus on are the different pieces of information that you're going to get and you'll see I'm circling my mouse around global IT, my team, and my work and those are the three areas where you're going to focus most of your stuff. Global IT is fairly self-explanatory. These are all the tickets that are currently uh, open in IT. My team is associated to all of the tickets that are that are assigned to any team that I'm a part of, which could mean that I'm uh, uh, several different teams if I'm part of several different teams in that case. And then my work. Uh, my work represents all of the work that you specifically have assigned. And as you can tell, I can just simply click on that particular dashboard. It's going to pull up the information that I've requested and in this particular case um, many of you when you first log in are going to get the my work dashboard you're not going to have a lot of work assigned until we finally get things kind of moving forward but I'm going to focus on this different piece but as you can tell I can just click on the my teamwork it's going to refresh and pull up all of the data this data is uh, does refresh every couple of minutes so even if you leave this dashboard open it's going to immediately come open so I'm going to focus on my work let's talk about a couple of the different things that are here. I'm going to point out a couple of the different things with the interface so you get used to utilizing the tool. First off, I'm going to start with the task pane back over here where the quick search is. This is a quick way to be able to look up a specific ticket or look up a specific user. So let's start by looking up a specific user. And I'm going to change this drop down right here to customer internal, which searches our contact manager for our customer internal records. I'm going to go ahead and put in a last name in this particular case. I'll put in my last name, Thule. This is going to search for two particular individuals that it comes up in our search database, both of them, uh, one of them being student, one of them being me. So I'm going to pull up this, this page, double click on the contact manager, and it pulls up all the information about me. Some of this data will be populated and changed as the tool becomes much more developed. But one of the things I want to point out is these are all of the tickets that have been assigned to me as a customer. You'll notice some of them are grayed out and some of them are black or normal regular color. The ones that are grayed out have been resolved or closed and are no longer in an open state and the others are in an open state. So anytime you're presented with this customer contact management panel, always make sure to check what tickets are currently open for that particular user. So let's go back. I'm just going to click on the home button up here in the top corner. The home button takes me back to my main dashboard page. So you can do that from any other part of the tool. Anywhere you are, the home button will always be visible and you'll be able to come in and click on that button to take you back to your home page. In this particular case, Global IT is my home page, but many of you, as I mentioned before, will see the My Work tab when you first log in because we're focusing on the work that you're dealing with. So we talked a little bit earlier about how this also searches for incidents. So I'm going to go here and click on incident and I'm going to do a search. Now I happen to see that I have a ticket listed right here, 100810. So if a customer happened just to give me a ticket number, I could come in and uh, change the search to search for incident and go in and put in that particular number. And I'd hit enter when I hit enter it pulls up the specific ticket that I have listed or that I had searched for notice that I can search for things like uh, only open incidents I can change the relevance and how it searches for that particular data I can also do a couple of other things uh, in the search menus back over here I won't dig into it too deeply but it kind of gives you a good idea of how you can search specifically for a ticket or specifically for a user so let's go back to my home button when I get back to my home button, um, I'm going to go over a couple of the different things that you would normally see on your tabs. And uh, in your particular case, you're going to see things like auto tasks and this list across the top that lists out all of our open queues. Now many of you may see your menu bars look a little bit something like this when it first starts and the tool has this set on the second row. Anytime that you want to bring that up to kind of give you some additional screen real estate all you have to do is grab on the three little dots and put it right put your mouse right over the part that you want it to butt up right next to and it'll pop up into that area and give you some additional real estate. 
So let's talk just a little bit about these different pieces. These are all of the different open queues. And what is an open queue? An open queue is a ticket that's been assigned to a specific team, but not to an individual. So say, for instance, someone assigns something to the IT support open queue. If they just assigned it to that particular team, but did not choose an individual when they went through the assignment process, it would show up in the open queue. All of our different teams go through the process of owning their open queue uh, and reviewing the uh, tickets that get sent to that location. They assign ownership to particular individuals and then work on the ticket from there uh, and either process it to the next or escalate it to the next group or, or process it and handle it out from that particular point. So in this case, I'm just going to click on support over here. This pulls up the open queue. Normally there would never be this many open tickets in that particular queue, but I do want to point out a couple of different things you'll notice that this particular queue has a team ownership assigned of only a couple of tickets but all of these other tickets are in here and that's because the IT support queue is the open default queue that everything gets dumped into so if someone creates a self-service ticket or someone uh, messes up and doesn't create an appropriate assignment when they create a ticket everything is going to come to the IT support queue and the IT support group will go through the process of managing reviewing that and moving the ticket to the appropriate location. One of the other things I'll point out is that many of you when you look at some of these screens will not see it in this kind of Excel spreadsheet type of uh, format. Many of you will see it like uh, this right here. Uh, by default the tool starts with showing you your results in a non-grid form. It kind of shows you some uh, spreads out each of the different tickets, shows you some more description information and I don't really find this particular style just as, as efficient as it is to move it over to the grid view. So it's very easy every time you install the tool on your particular machine just go up to view is one of the first things you do and say results in grid. Now the nice thing about results in grid is it really does act like a sortable Excel spreadsheet. You can come in and say, you know what, I just want to sort by all the tickets that are owned by IT support. And I'll just click on that option, do a descending sort, and it pulls all of these up, all the blank ones are below it. Or maybe I just want to sort it by who the particular customers are, or maybe by last modified date, so I get an idea of uh, when the last time some of these tickets were touched and man if you look at some of these they haven't been touched in almost a year so these are the different queues and if I click on the different queue for students it'll pop up a series and each of the different teams will have a series of tickets our goal is to ensure that our open queues are always zero and that we've always assigned them out to someone to work on those particular issues but this gives you a quick idea of how to utilize uh, those open queue stats so I'm gonna click on my home button and go back over to that location uh, just to kind of show you a couple of things you'll notice back over here is my knowledge bar many of you will not see this when you first log in because it is another setting that you have to turn on if you go over here to view and click on knowledge you'll see it disappeared in my case but this is what many of you would see when you first log in you go up to view and turn on the knowledge task pane you'll notice that I can make this larger I can make it smaller just like the task pane over here um, to fit the size of my screen and keep in mind that the real estate that we've designed these uh, the, this interface for is for a widescreen 21 and a half inch monitor uh, without zoom settings turned on because we know by default most everyone sets uh, sets theirs up without zoom settings turned on and at a very high resolution but one of the things that you can do to gain a little bit of real estate is to play with these menus. So you'll notice I have an X button and a pin button and a pin button right over here. And the pin button basically folds down that particular menu and gives me some additional real estate. But when I move my mouse over here, it pops up as a pane that I still have access to. I can do the same thing over here to the knowledge base. And now I have some additional screen real estate that I didn't have before. I'm going to go ahead and pop them back out because I feel like they're very useful and they give me some ability to be able to do some things uh, with the tool that I think are really unique. Keep in mind that this knowledge pane cannot be used when you are on a dashboard like this right here. The knowledge pane in this particular case is utilized to search for knowledge to attach to a particular ticket or an incident. We don't have a ticket or an incident open in this case, so I can't use this piece. But if you are on a dashboard, you can still search our knowledge, board, knowledge base by clicking on the search published articles up here and search for a particular knowledge article. I won't do that yet. We'll get into that with some navigation stuff later on. But I just want you to note that you cannot use the knowledge pane unless you're in a particular ticket. 
So I'm going to go back to my work and I'm going to talk just a little bit about some of the different pieces that are here. And you've noticed that I can switch back and forth between different dashboards by simply clicking once on each of the different dashboard names. But you can drill down into all of the different information by double clicking on the numbers that you see here. So in this case, I've clicked on my work and I have 24 tickets currently assigned to me uh, and, and assigned to me directly, not to my team, to me directly. Um, so if I double clicked on that 24, it would pull up a list of all of those. You can see they're all currently owned by me and associated to my particular team. And I can look at the status in that same spreadsheet form. One of the things I'll point out is that you can see the difference between some of the different colors. You see, what's the red for that's, that's listed here? Um, red indicates a priority status or a VIP. And I bet you can guess by the two little icons that are next to each one of them. In this case, uh, a red icon or a red text with a little person next to it means that this is a particular VIP user. And Carlene is our test case in this, in this situation where she was made a specific VIP uh, for this uh, test video. Uh, and in this case, you'll see the little red flag, which means that this is a priority one status. I'll talk a little bit more about priority when we get into the other incident navigational videos to give you a better understanding of how priority works. But for now, just understand that if you see red marked on your tickets, it's either a VIP or it's a priority one issue. I'm going to click back on home to take me back to my home page and then go to my work just so you can kind of see the different things that are here. Now keep in mind that this is a breakdown of all of the work that is currently assigned to me. These are not all the I mean these are not all added together to equal the work that I have. As you'll notice I have 24 tickets that are assigned to me and those are all listed in the my open issues that are listed right here in that spreadsheet form to keep you from having to double click on the 24. But these are a breakdown of the ones that that are currently assigned to me and there's some key things that I want you to hone in on and they're and, and they're the titles across the top unread items here mean that I have 18 tickets that have a current unread item associated to that ticket it means that there might be a journal that's added or some mail history or a customer request that I have not yet gone in and said yes I have seen this particular piece so I have 18 of those tickets of my 24 that are currently open um, new action required. These are 11 tickets out of my 24 that are in a new status. Now we have several different status fields that are a little different than what you used to have in Heat. We have new, which is the first uh, status that's assigned to a particular ticket when it gets created. Then we have in progress, which means that you're taking action on the ticket, that you're reaching out to the customer, setting an expectation for them on what's going to happen. And then you have two options from there, either pending or resolved. Now pending allows you to go through the process of kind of setting the ticket in a pause or in an on hold mode waiting for something to happen like you're waiting on a response from a customer or you're waiting on a piece of software to arrive or waiting on a technician to complete an install. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about those pending issues uh, in, in a lower quadrant in just a little bit. But right now we're going to focus on new. We do have a 24 hour action policy that we have in place right now that's reminded right here in this particular area that, that uh, indicates that out of these 11 tickets, I needed to have at least reached out to the customer and changed the status from new to in progress uh, and set an expectation for the customer on when that issue is going to be resolved. Well man, out of my 24 tickets, almost half of them are currently new, so I'm not doing a good job right now. But we'll talk about looking at the status of your ticket different tickets when uh, when we get into the incident navigation video later. These two are pretty self-explanatory. I have two VIP issues and three priority one issues. Again, noting back to the stuff that's here that's red. Now remember, you can only see two red icons right here, but I have additional ones as you scroll down that, down that particular list that help to indicate um, priority one and VIP issues. So let's talk about the issues in red because these are some of the things that you need to focus on when you first get into the tool. I have three violated pending status tickets. You know, I talked earlier about how you could set a ticket to a pending status, which meant I'm waiting on the customer to get back to me. Well, along with that particular status, you have the ability to set a date to remind you to come back and look at that particular ticket. So in this case, I have three tickets that I had set to a pending status, and as of today, I'm past my pending status date that I have set, or my deadline that I set, and the tool is reminding me, hey, you need to go back in and take a look at these particular tickets 
tickets because they're violating their pending status. Now by default that's set to about a week but you can set that to any time frame that you need based on the particular situation that you're in. Violated SLA status I'll talk about in just a little bit but let me talk about these two fields first. One of them being 14 days pl plus 14 days old. This means that I have 21 tickets out of the 24 that are currently assigned to me that are older than 14 days. And this is a warning. This is a point in time when we believe that there's starting to be some issues with uh, with the issue with that particular ticket or uh, or that could create some issues for the customer as well when they really start worrying about issues getting resolved if they have not been resolved in that two-week period. This doesn't mean if we've had conversations with them every day and all those other pieces. This just means the age of the ticket has gone past 14 days. I also have two user down issues. User down is defined as the users currently incapacitated from being able to do their primary job. That does not mean that they have a secondary computer that they can check their email on and do their primary tasks on. It means that either all their current, current machines are down or their one machine that they have assigned to them is down and they're unable to do their work which we have a two hour turnaround or two, two business hour turnaround response time on from our consultants where we'll have them out in the field or on the phone. So this is just kind of a, uh, a way to indicate some of the priority issues that you might have assigned to you. Now SLA value, I'm, I'm going to focus first on this little activity issues down here and I'm going to double click on this one right here. I had 16 tickets out of my 24 that had an activity issue and this meant that I have not touched that ticket for at least seven business, or at least, sorry, at least seven days, which means that all of these tickets, if you look at this last modified field right here, have not been touched in seven days, which is an indicator that there's a problem, that there's not activity going on, that you're not updating your tickets, or that you haven't gone in to do something. It's a reminder, hey, get back on these tickets because there hasn't been an activity in seven plus days. Uh, so that's a very easy indicator for you. The other value that's here is called our SLA value. Now, SLA stands for service level. The easiest, quickest description of what a service level is is the definition of what that particular service is, so defining the rules around what it is and what we will do, and then also identifying a time frame in which we will respond and resolve uh, that particular issue. So in this case, I have 23 tickets with an SLA violation. Now there are two different pieces to uh, SLA deadlines. One of them is the response time, the initial response time. It's the time that it takes for us to go from new status to in progress, which means that I've reached out to the customer, set an expectation on when we're going to get the issue resolved, or um, uh, I'm actually on the phone with them or out in the field with them getting the problem resolved. So that's response time, an SLA response time. Then I have an SLA resolve time, meaning there's a specific deadline time put on each of the different tickets, which we'll talk about a little bit later in some of the um, tutorials with incident navigation, but this means that I ha that uh, you could be past the resolve date or there's a deadline that's set for each different ticket saying by this time we should have this resolved. Now this is based on both service, the type of categorization that you use, as well as the priority that's assigned to the ticket. So in those cases it's extremely important to take a look at the SLA values that are assigned to each ticket when they get created. Again, 23 out of my 24 have an SLA value. Keep in mind that all of this data your manager can see either through the My Teams tab where they can look at everybody's particular data or by special dashboards that are created for them that give them the ability to look at some of the work that you're doing and point out areas where we need to make sure that we're focusing on particular tickets or getting in touch with the customer or where we may be stalling out on particular issues that need an additional look. So I'm going to go back to my work and I'm going to just talk about the last few little items on this particular um, on this particular form and one of them is average time to close and one of them is close this month. So close this month is fairly simple. The first of the month it's set to zero and it counts up as I go through the month and until I get to the very end of the month and then resets again. So I have 14 close tickets this month. But how could I have an average time to close of 57 days and it's only like the 15th of the month. So there's no way that I could have an average time to close of 57. Well, and this particular calculation is based on the age of tickets that you close at that particular time. So if I close a ticket that's six months, six months old, 
that averages in to my average value for this particular month. Now we'll show you some other areas where you can see over a period of a year because a, a month can definitely uh, uh, show some fluctuation when you create when you close an older ticket versus one that's very very new. But the reason that we put this in place is because we wanted people to realize some of the big things that can happen in terms of fluctuation of your numbers when a ticket that's very old gets closed. So again, I can double click on either one of these. It's a great way for me to go back and look at a particular ticket that might be closed, um, that I might have closed earlier and now realized, oh man, I, I had a solution back here on this ticket that I closed just a couple of days ago and uh, I need to use that solution again. So a quick way to be able to get access to that. This knowledge stuff is very self-explanatory. The new tool includes a knowledge base and in that knowledge base uh, you have several different levels of ownership and review standings. Now you cannot create a knowledge article and publish it out to the rest of the world without some process or review uh, that happens from the IT knowledge committee. So what ends up happening is you go through the process of creating a knowledge article as a draft and right now I don't have any draft knowledge articles. Um, when you create that knowledge article as a draft you do the work get it set up then you submit it for review and the IT knowledge team then publishes out after getting the chance to review it and approve it if they have some questions or problems they send it back to you back as a draft and give you notes on some things that you might need to change so this is how you would get access to your knowledge drafts in that particular case I also have KB articles that are up for review. Now these are tick these are knowledge articles that I own or that I created, I'm the expert on, and are now up for review. And every article that we create has a review date of one year set for it. So what it ends up doing is that once it hits that one year review date, it pops up on my field, reminds me that I need to go take a look at that knowledge article to make sure it's up to date. I check on the status of it to review it and then reset my review dates once I've had the chance to take a look at the knowledge article and then this shows me the knowledge articles that I'm currently an owner of uh, the reason that we put this here was to give you quick immediate access back to knowledge articles that you create and the reason that we do that is because a lot of times knowledge articles that you're the expert for are the ones that you tend to use the most and so this gives you a quick access to the articles that you've created to make changes or improvement on knowledge articles needing approval are things that have just been submitted from draft to approval mode and they're waiting on the IT knowledge uh, committee to go through and review and correct those articles and either publish them out or send them back to the individual so the green triangle right here is the last little bit that I'll go over without uh, before I talk about the charts down towards the bottom the green triangle is a way to kind of uh, connect you to tickets that you've dealt with and are no longer owned by you so say for instance I created a ticket I did some work for the particular user and then decided uh, this is an issue that has to go to hardware or this is an issue that has to go to network and I have to assign it to someone outside of my team. Either I'm giving it to uh, a team queue or assigning it to an open queue in those areas or I'm assigning it to a particular individual. This is a way to be able to keep track of that particular issue and again the green triangle symbolizing your connection to someone else to a customer to a ticket all kind of bringing it all together all into one. As you'll see, I currently have four issues in my green triangle, meaning I have four tickets that I have assigned to another team, to outside of my team. The default team means there are six tickets that are not assigned to me right now that have been assigned to other members of my default team and every individual is going to have a default team most individuals will only be in one team but in my case I have several and so we've built this out to help you differentiate between tickets that are still in your group and tickets that have been assigned out to others uh, that you no longer own but may need some connection to to continue to prompt people to get those resolved or to provide some additional information. So I'll scroll down just a little bit and look at the other things in the dashboard. Now remember everything in the dashboard you can double click on including the charts. So this issues resolved, um, my issues resolved this year is broken down by months. So you can tell I didn't do anything in February because I don't have any data that's shown up on this chart. But you know what? I want to go back and look at the eight tickets that I resolved in January. So I can go back, double click on that. You can see all those tickets. They're currently grayed out because they're 
in a closed or resolved state and then I can go back either hit the back button or hit the home button to go back to my dashboard I'll hit the back button in this particular case and then go over the bottom items so again you can also double click on particular forms and files right here in the uh, in the funnel chart but then I want to pull up some of the things that you that uh, will kind of demonstrate uh, that you that we're now identifying in the ticket right now in the past or currently with heat we really just look at how many tickets you closed who closed it and how many you possibly created those are really the only stats we're, we're looking at or have the ability to track in this tool we have the ability to track all different pieces of the activity that you, that's taken place in a ticket I can look at the number of assignments that you've made the number of emails that you've sent from the tool the number of journal notes or other updates that have been added uh, to a particular ticket the number of resolved issues so if you look at this particular area and the reason that we put this up here is to kinda of give you an idea of what you've done in the past seven days as you can tell I was pretty busy on the 10th uh, I had lots of different updates that were added on the 13th even more uh, things that were added to those particular tickets to kind of show me what my activity is your managers have the ability to see this for year at for a year at a time so they get more than just this week value but this is giving you a little bit of an idea just a small picture of some of the things that you're working on and what we track uh, while using the tool um, remember that the dashboards that are uh, there are additional dashboards that are added to this tool like incidents requests and problems are sorry incidents and requests these are a breakdown of everything that's in the global IT piece and it's broken down by incidents and requests but the pieces that are right here problems changes and projects are an area that we're not quite ready to launch yet those will come out in phase two so we're leaving them here as just kind of placeholders for you to be able to see the content that's here um, you don't have to worry about utilizing them at all, but they are placed here just as placeholders for us as we get ready to move into phase two. You'll notice down at the bottom we have our knowledge base and our knowledge articles that have been added to the tool which will only continue to grow these are just kind of the base articles that we started with and then our CMDB our asset system which has about uh, I think it's about 43,000 records now this is only displaying about 33 at this point these are records that you can associate to tickets like a computer or a device that's been registered in the, in the system directly to the ticket to be able to give us more specific details about what's going on now one of the nice things I'll reminds you about is that it's very easy to get to our knowledge dashboard by just clicking on the knowledge uh, icon here this pulls up what our end user customers will end up seeing they'll be able to see all of our different knowledge base uh, articles we'll go in and say I'll just click on student I'll click on this set up an Xbox one to the network just to give you a glimpse of what the knowledge base will look like um, when you get into this particular tool it's going to show you screenshots if we've added them in you're going to get to identify how it's categorized uh, whether it's visible to just uh, people in IT everything that starts in our knowledge base is visible to everyone in IT with the exception of IT students if this box is checked then it's visible to IT students and the people in IT if this box is checked then it's visible to everyone on campus meaning people can utilize it or get access to it through our self-service tool and you'll see descriptions keywords um, pictures and uh, forms that are added in what who the audience is for and what the status of that particular knowledge article is about so this is a very quick overview of the knowledge piece we'll talk more about it in some other navigational videos but this is really kind of drawing to a close on the dashboard piece we've kind of covered all of the the big pieces and remember you can get in double click on anything look at the content that's there this is really a very quick way to be able to drill in on specific things that are important to you and that you may be uh, dealing with on a regular basis the goal should be that when I come to work out of my 24 tickets that are here all of this is zeros I should not have tickets that are older than 14 days I should not have any user down issues I should not have any violated SLA's or violated pendings and all of my issues should be read shouldn't have any new tickets and both of these two should have been handled already so you know the goal should be of every day that I come to work that I get all of this down to zero and if I'm doing that you're not going to show up on any reports or or uh, radar of uh, of having some particular problem uh, with a ticket uh, that your manager might uh, need to approach you about so just keep in mind that this tool is helping to remind you of the things that you need to do on a regular basis I want to thank you for taking the time to watch the dashboard piece make sure to check 
out some of the other videos that we'll put out. Like I said, we're going to put out a uh, navigational video just about uh, dealing with creating an incident and managing the incidents that you have. And we'll deal with some other things that come along with the knowledge base as well as some basic tips and tricks. So this is just the first part, definitely one to kind of get you introduced to the tool. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the help desk. They'll be more than happy to work with you and trying to answer some of those questions or they'll put you in touch with me and we can get some of those questions resolved. Again, thank you for watching and have a great day.